Hi, I'm Joachim for Statistics Globe and in this video I'll explain how to match wildcard pattern and character strings using the R programming language. In the video I'm going to show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the wildcard pattern and character string vector that we can create with lines 2 to 6 of the code. So in line two of the code, I'm creating our wildcard pattern. So after running this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object appears, which is called my wildcard. And we can print this wildcard to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that our wildcard contains the characters XXX and a star at the end. And then we can also create a vector of character strings as you can see in line five of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new vector object appears, which is called my vector. And we can print this vector to the RStudio console by running line six of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have created a new vector object, which contains four character strings with different character pattern. Now let's assume that we want to return the positions where our wildcard matches our character string vector. Then we can apply the grab function as you can see in line eight of the code. And in this line of code, I'm applying the grab function to our wildcard and to our vector. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the values one and three are returned and these values correspond to the positions in our vector where the wildcard matches. So in other words, the first element of our vector has a match with our wildcard and the third element of our vector has a match with our wildcard. However, by running line eight of the code, we have only returned the positions of our wildcard matches and it is also possible to return the actual matching character strings by running line 10 of the code. And in this line of code, I'm again using the grab function. However, this time I'm also specifying the value argument to be equal to true. So if you run line 10 of the code, you can see at the bottom that the two character strings that are matching our wildcard have been returned. So in this case, the character strings xxxy and xxx5. Another possibility is provided by the grapple function, as you can see in line 12 of the code. And in this line of code, I'm using the grapple function to return a logical indicator, which is indicating whether our character string elements of our character string vector are matching the wildcard. So if you run line 12 of the code, you can see that a logical vector is returned. And in case the logical vector contains the value true, there is a match between our wildcard and our vector element. And in case the logical vector contains the value false, there's no match. So as we already know, the first and the third values in our vector have a match with our wildcard. Yeah, and last but not least, I want to show you how to create a subset of our vector that contains only those vector elements that have a match with our wildcard. And for this, we can use the grapple function once again. And this time we are using the grapple function to subset our vector and to store the output of this subset in a new data object, which is called my vector subset. So if you run line 14 of the code, you can see that a new vector object appears at the top right, which is called my vector subset. And we can print this vector object to the RStudio console by running line 15 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a data object that contains only those elements of our vector that are matching the wildcard. So in this video, I have explained how to match a wildcard with a character string in the R programming language. However, in case you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.